Welcome to Intelligent Automation Radio, the number one podcast for IT executives seeking insights on the impact and opportunities for innovation that automation is delivering to businesses around the world. Featuring thought leaders in AI, machine learning, orchestration, security automation, and the future of work. And now, on with the show. Welcome, everyone. My name is Guy Nadivi, and I'm the host of Intelligent Automation Radio. Our guest on today's episode is Andy Nalapan, Vice President and CIO of the Global Information Services Division at Broadcom. And for those of you not familiar with Broadcom, they're primarily known as a chip maker with about 21 billion in annual revenue. Broadcom is one of those companies whose products you almost certainly use, even if you don't know about them personally. For instance, they're Apple's sole provider of chips for wireless charging, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS capabilities. And they have been in all new iPhones sold since 2018. One analyst estimated that for every iPhone Apple sells, Broadcom earns $10. But of course, Broadcom sells its products to a lot more companies than Apple, and they use automation extensively to achieve some extraordinary efficiencies in their internal operations. And that intrigued us. So we invited Andy to come on our show and talk with us and share his insights. Andy, welcome to Intelligent Automation Radio. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Good. Glad to be here with you. Andy, uh, in an article put out by the Wharton School of Business, you're quoted as stating that the next generation of IT will be, quote, more nimble, flexible, mobility-based, and consumer-oriented, end quote. What did you mean by that, particularly the consumer-oriented part? Sure, sure. Um, you know, Guy, we live in a, in a time where the consumers are dictating the technology trend you know, which is very different than what it used to be when enterprises drove the technology trend, you know. The major traits of the consumerization is, is simple, scale, and secure, you know, with a faster, better, and cheaper delivery model. So, so my point is it's time for enterprises to embrace those traits and delivery model of the consumerization in, in, the, in, in the enterprises with the simple scale and secure, with faster and better and cheaper delivery model to make it IT is more nimble and flexible and mobility based. That's what I, I mean by consumer oriented. I read in that same Wharton Business School article that the average IT spend in the high tech electronic components industry is two and a half to three and a half percent of revenues, but you've kept Broadcom's costs close to 1% and you've a stated target of uh, less than 1% in two years. What are some of the ways automation and technologies like AI and machine learning enabled you to do that? Yeah, that, that's, that's a good point, Gay, though. Um, I take a lot of pride in, in driving down the IT cost while delivering more. You know, while there are so many uh, strategies and culture you know, uh, and, and the initiatives that would drive the, the cost down, and there's, there's automation and technologies like AI and machine learning also one of the, the critical component of that. Now, this automation technology, you know, it helps to deliver and manage the repeatable tasks, whether it is a help desk support call, IT service or infrastructure monitoring, completing a service request like provisioning or deprovisioning, and the business process tasks, you know, at, a, at a lowest possible cost with the highest quality, and also it scales quickly you know, you know, and, and seamlessly there. You know? These things, you know, um, uh, it helps to control our IT operational cost in, in two ways, I'll say. One is the eliminating the task itself. You know, we call it a work avoidance or a reduction of you know, the work. The, the second one is the, the cost of delivery you know, um, because of this consistency and high quality and, and, and automation there, the cost of delivery is, is lower than even you were outsourcing and offshoring that. You know? The automation really adds value when you have the scale and the standard offerings. And it has provided great synergies and economy of scale when we started you know, acquiring companies and integrating and, and integrating them into, into our um, main um, um, enterprise over there. So an m and synergy was much higher um, due to this technology. You've been outspoken in liberating your 800 IT employees from performing mundane tasks like monitoring. Can you please tell us about some of the things your employees used to do versus the ways they're contributing at a higher level to Broadcom now, thanks to automation? 
Sure. No, th this is one of my very favorite taglines. No, I, I, I always say liberate IT from their day-to-day -day mundane tasks and firefighting so that they can focus on more value-add stuff for the corporations. You know, in IT, right, it's a thankless job. Every day you get so many alerts and so many P1 tickets and in the, you're, you're, you're fighting day in, day out to keep the lights on all the time there. If an organization you now wants to be in an innovating organization, then there needs to be focus. You can't have it constantly you know, you know, innovate while doing um, and the integrations year, and year after year and fighting fire all the time to keep the lights on and bright. Unless otherwise, you find ways to, to liberate them there. So, so what we did is we found ways to liberate my team you know, from those, those stuff of monitoring, you know, P1 tickets, escalations and all the stuff so that they can focus on you know, the critical and more meaningful and business impacting initiatives. You know, those are, those are you know, few of them. Now, one is the, you know, like you said earlier, how to keep the IT spend lower than the 1% you know, while providing more capabilities, enhancing employee experience, empowering employees, you know, by exploring you know, the new technologies and solutions available in the market and being a you know, frontier in those, in those, in adopting those technologies and solutions to them. You know? And the second one is also spend more time with our, with our partners you know, in the functions and, and divisions to understand their pain points you know, and, and focus on simplifying their processes and also find you know, cost-effective solutions for them there. You know? And the third one is, you know, since we've been doing a lot of m and integrations year after year, find ways to speed, that up, speed up that integration, that, you know, deliver it faster and faster. And also, you know, um, you know, we are you now venturing into a software business now, which is a different business than the hardware chip design business. So you now we you know, enable our business to embrace that software business there by adding more capabilities over there. So these are the things you now uh, uh, we are able to focus, my team is able to focus you know, by liberating them you know, from their, their mundane tasks of, of monitoring and firefighting escalations and, and uh, you know, by, you know, on those things, you know, moving to either the automations and or offshoring and outsourcing it so that I can have this, this uh, my, my team can you know, day in, day out focus on these stuff there. From a psychological and cultural perspective, how difficult was it to persuade resistant staff to let go of the old way of doing things so automation could take on a big role and so could they? So um, it's all, it all depends, right? It's, it's mostly it's a mindset and culture there. You know? First of all, the organization and the leadership should believe in that you know, before we get into the individuals. You know? And also we educate the individuals the need and the benefits of automation, not only for the corporation, but also for the individuals. You know? you know, automation is not new to the human being. Automation keeps evolving and extends itself into the areas as the need arises as, you know, uh, um, over the years there. You know? In my perspective, we can't avoid automation as it, as it does eventually help the human race to move up you know, um, in, in, their, in their life, you know, um, and in the quality of life too. You know, human, does, human race has de dealt with many automations for decades, and, and decades and decades, like in you know, farming, transportation, construction, manufacturing, so it's not new. And just it has come to the technology now in, in IT and other business processes. You know, you know. So uh, what we have done the, the right way is, you know, um, we, 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 you know, we go and educate and convince the resisting individuals, you know, and we use all this to influence them. Um, and since everyone is talking about these automations and, and, and we are a high tech company, and we live in the Silicon, no, we have a lot of presence in Silicon Valley and, and, and big cities there. You know, people are very aware of this automations and AI and ML and chatbots, you know? So it's, it's much easier to go and convince now than a few years back. So you know, we try to, to educate them and uh, enable them and make them understand the need. And this is something you can't avoid. And, and you can't no, you can't run away there. You need to embrace it there. And also, once they start doing it, and 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 we also help them to retrain them, and and their their skill levels, their value add goes up, so they become much more happier there. So so it's 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 just that you had to break that ice initially there by by doing all this, you know, um, showing this how how important to the corporation and it is how it can help the individual there. Those are the two main things that we focus on. Chatbots or 
uh, virtual support agents are playing an increasingly important role in the automation of IT operations by enabling end user self-service. What do you envision will be the role of virtual support agents in IT operations by let's say uh, the end of 2020? See, my, my, my vision is that you know, every corporate employee will have their own personal IT assistant. Of course, it should be virtual, you know? So you, know, you, can, you can name it you know, any way, what you want to name it. You know? But the important thing is it will know more about the employee than the employee himself or herself knows about them. You know? the, the IT assistant will become a very smarter and smarter and will start resolving issues before even the employee notices it, you know? And um, it, 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 the thing is the employees won't even have to read the tons and tons of emails comes out of ITs about outages or, or downtimes, or trainings, et cetera, there. You know? It will provide the assistant, you know, the information when the employee need it. And it'll train you when, when the employee needs it there, you know? It'll also, you know, it'll get you the right help by connecting to the right resources um, whether it is a human being or other resources that without having to wait or to call or go through the, 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 the menus and uh, after menus and selecting or filling out forms there. It will not only improve the productivity, you know, um, but also will help to secure the enterprise better and also it will make the, the work you know, more enjoyable. You know? And um, um, they, will, they will also be more um, uh, collaborative uh, also that it will improve the, the productivity in the same time too. And uh, I call this, these the smart assistants in the future will be really at your fingertip all the time, you know, whenever or wherever you, know, you are and whenever you need it, and it will be very proactive as well as predictive. Andy, what skills have you found are most needed to effectively automate IT operations? In my perspective, the most important skill to effectively automate IT operation is process knowledge. You no, know? it's whether it is a business or IT there. You no, know? I, I would say the techno functional is the best skills to have. You no, know? apart from that, the ability to identify in the use case and and simplify that. You know, and use the right technology to automate that that particular you know, use case over there. And um, also the ability to drive the automation towards the desired business outcome, which is very, very important. You know, the, the desired business as well as the end user outcome there. You know? it, it is, is my opinion, you know, um, the skills are not uh, the typical or traditional IT skills. It's, it's more of, a, of a, a process, business process skills, end user specific skills there, you know? and also uh, more focused on the outcome driven skills. You've had a lot of success with automation at Broadcom, and that leaves me curious, what kind of organizational changes are needed in order for automation and AI to succeed in the enterprise? We, we, there, there are, no, there are um, you know, many ways, you know, you know, we, we can, you know, many skills we needed there. You know? So obviously, you no, know, you know, it's, it's all based on the business outcome on the uh, process there. You know? It is, uh, you need to identify, you know, have the, the right leaders uh, to lead drive this, you know? And like I said earlier, automation is not just technology and it's a culture change too. So we need to decide what the right set setup. Now, one of the things is you need to make a decision is to have a, either there is a horizontal function or a group of people which drive this whole automation, or you have embed it into the each, each function or divisions within your IT or organizations over there, no? Or no, you have the horizontal team work with the each one and then work, you know, gain that process knowledge and automate it. So based on the size and, and, and culture of your, your company there, no? And also the automation requires lots of marketing and training as adoption is very critical. There's no adoption, it'll be big failure there. So it's good to have those kind of uh, uh, skills to, to market this and train and improve the adoption is there. Um, and, and automation is, is not on a one-time thing. It's an incremental and it's a journey. You know? So it's important to have that, that sprint and agile methodology. So you know, because it, this, this benefits come in incrementals. And so they have the skills you know, to, have, to follow that, that sprint and agile 
processes and methodology there. And also to have the skills to not to, to familiar with the, the data and the knowledge of the data, the patterns, and the ability to think outside of this is IT technology framework, which all this is critical skills. Apart from all of this, what's an important thing in organization is, is to have a, a trustworthy leadership, you know, and a partnership with your functions and the, the divisional stakeholders so that you, know, you can go and influence them and you can drive the adoption and make the automation more successful. So once automation in AI are implemented in the enterprise for IT, what is the best way to persuade other enterprise leaders to implement it in their domain? See, see once, the, once you, you know, a successful and meaningful automation is delivered with a clear business outcome, then obviously you have earned the trust to have a discussion with your peers in the organization. There. So that's, that's the basics. Then you need to approach them with a proposal to solve the business problems. You, know, you need to be perceived as a helper first, you know, and also be respected you know, for the knowledge you have on, the, on, the, on their problem, you know, and also the automation there. So it is better to develop a relationship with the movers and shakers of that, in that organization and go with them as a joint proposal to enable them you know, to, to either improve their SLAs, you know, um, or they, there's a customer facing organization there, or even internal, and also or help them to improve their bottom line or top line or productivity there. So it's basically, you know, you, you need to go and, and have a, a seat with them there and influencing and talking in their language and, and giving a hope that no, I'm going to you know, impact positively you know, your outcome, your SLAs, you know, your top line there. And that's, how, you know, that, that's the important way to go and extend this automation, expand to the other um, um, parts of other, you know, your organization there. We've discussed how to succeed in the enterprise with automation and AI, but I'm curious, what kinds of setbacks and failures are you likely to experience when implementing automation and AI? So some of the things are no, no, um, the adoption rate, right? No, if it is not no, done right, the adoption rates and effectiveness is, is one of, you know, could be one of the setbacks. No? And also to get a support within, also outside of organizations there. No? And also um, the time it takes to have a meaningful, you know, um, very explicit, meaningful ROI um, of the automations there. And sometimes, you know, you, you know the complication of the process make a wrong choice of the, the, the use case, which is not the right candidate or suitable for the automation, ends up in, in the not delivering the desired outcome. And also sometimes you, know, you have a competing initiatives. You, know, you do something, the same thing as somebody else is doing it with an organization, if it's a big organization there, and uh, that might also uh, be a setback there. So those are the few things there. And also uh, the last but not least is the, the wrong choice of tools and, and technology and the use case. Speaking of ROI, is there a single metric other than ROI that best captures the effectiveness of automating IT operations? It, yes, there is. In, in my opinion, the single uh, metric is the, the business or end user outcome. No, that is the metric there. No, but what is that? No, so for each, each you know, use case or process could be different. It could be a service uptime, or it could be a service completion time, or a quality of the tasks, or a work reduction, or work avoidance, or cost savings. So it depends on the business process, but it all has to be an end user or a business focused or a wider, not an IT focused, not a technology focused. And, and, and it has to be a hard cost. You know, that is better than the more than the soft cost that you should be able to quantify it and able to come up with a convincing a hard dollars. And that is possible with automation. Andy, what should enterprise executives who have never dealt with AI and automation know before deploying it? I think the first thing is define the purpose. Why should I automate? Or should I? You know? And what is in it for the corporation? That's the very first thing. You know? Next is, is go and identify the right, right use case. You know? I mean, you want to start, you want to start at the right foot. You know? The right process, the right process uh, or whether it's business or IT to automate so that, that the outcome is meaningful, it's easily explainable there so that you can gain some traction and, and trust and credibility there. You know? And third is to get the sponsorship. No, no, the sponsorship and leadership for the automation, which is very critical, so that everybody's behind you. 
And, and last but not least is like we talked about this metric, have a metric on the outcome and success of the automation there and measure that continuously there. It's, it's a journey and it's not a one-time thing there. Many automations don't deliver the desired outcome and, and not every automation is the right one for every corporation there. So it's very important to have that, that metric and continuously you know, monitor and make sure that you no, know, it is delivering what it's supposed to. For the CIOs, CTOs, and other IT executives listening in, what is the one big must-have piece of advice you'd like them to take away from our discussion with regards to implementing automation and AI for IT operations? Okay, um, I think what I would say is automation is real and beneficial, you know, because automation has been there for a long time, you know, um, and uh, a lot of people said it's, it's expensive, it's costly, you know, it's not going to be easy to do it, no benefits that we have passed all that. Now it is, it's automation is not that cumbersome, it's not that hard, it is easy, it's real, it's beneficial, you know, and, and uh, it, it is not really that capex intensive, you know, um, you can you can do a lot of automations with with uh, with inexpensively. You no, know? there are many choices too. There's not a one thing. You no, know? there are there are a lot of choices and technologies available. You no, know? but you have to be one has to be very careful about what use case you choose to automate and what technologies and solutions you choose. You no, know? everyone nowadays calls everything as AI, ML, or data science or automation. There, so be be smart and figure out the right automation for your corporation and culture. Excellent, Excellent advice. All right. Looks like that's all the time we have for on this episode of Intelligent Automation Radio. Andy, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, providing some fascinating insights about what AI and automation are doing for Broadcom. It's been a pleasure having you as our guest. Thank you. It's, it's, it's been a great talking to you. I, had, I, had, uh, I enjoyed uh, the conversation with you. Thank you. Hope it has been useful for everyone who's listening to this, this conversation. Andy Nalapan, Vice President and CIO of the Global Information Services Division at Broadcom. Thank you for listening, everyone. And remember, don't hesitate. Automate. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, or anywhere else you listen to podcasts. We publish new shows regularly, and you won't want to miss one. And please remember to give us a rating. It helps others find the show. Intelligent Automation Radio is sponsored by IEHU, the leader in intelligent automation solutions for IT and cybersecurity. You can get more information about IEHU by visiting our website at IEHU.com. That's A-Y-E-H-U.com. IEHU, creating the successful path to the self-driving enterprise.